With a roster dominated by underclassmen, the Pepperdine Waves made a splash early in the conference season, jumping out to a 3-0 record in WCC play for the first time since 2002. The youthful Waves struggled down the stretch. However, the future is bright in Malibu, as an underclassman led the team in scoring in all but two games last season. Okay, Tom, well, let's start with a 3-0 start. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. Hadn't happened for Pepperdine yeah. basketball in quite a while. What did that do for your program? Well, you know, we, uh, as you said, we got off to a good start in conference. Now, we beat people that we should have beaten, to be honest with you. These were teams that we, you know, were as good or a little better than at that time, and, I, and that helped us. And, and yet, having said that, as the, as the rest of the season progressed, it obviously didn't help us in the one-loss record. Now, we went up to Gonzaga and Portland right after that and played very well at Gonzaga. Mm -hmm. Uh, close at halftime, had a chance to win that game, and played reasonably well at Portland. And then I think we started to lose our confidence a little bit, but the fact that we did get off to a 3-0 start was very helpful to us. Yeah. Uh, Michael Thompson, development, what kind of a year was it for him, and how does it project ahead? Well, Michael is a, uh, you know, a very versatile player. He can do a lot of things. He did not shoot the ball well early in the year. As the season progressed, he became a better and better perimeter shooter. Uh, learn to attack the basket. A lot of times he settled for jumpers and he started to take the ball and attack the basket. Patient, and that's a great sign when your team can be patient. Wow, Hobson again! Right at Harris this time. And the first foul called on Elias Harris, but credit Michael Thompson. He's come into this game with just raw aggression. For Very smart defender, uh, at, you know, an adequate rebounder. Uh, we've just played him so many minutes that he kind of grounds down. And this year we're hoping that in his senior year he'll stay stronger during the course of the year and be able to finish stronger because we played him. We played him over 1,000 minutes both years, and that's a lot. Do you feel, Tom, like you'll have the depth coming back this year that you'll be able to do that? I do. We're bringing in a freshman that's going to kind of relieve him at his position ultimately. And I think we can start playing him and rest Michael and Keon Bell some so that those guys don't have to play those huge minutes. And, uh, you know, sometimes when your team is struggling, you're playing all these minutes, sometimes you lose concentration and, you know, you're not playing quite as well in certain areas as you should. And hopefully the, through the recruiting process, we'll be able to, uh, to help that situation. Is there something that Michael can do to help himself? Conditioning wise, is there a, is there is there a room in that regard for him? Well, there is. He just needs to continue to work real hard in the mm -hmm. off season and his strength and conditioning. We're taking our team to Italy here uh, in May fourth through the fifteenth, and I think he's going to get a chance to play more games over there and continue to his 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 strength and conditioning program is is crucial for him though. And then when he gets back, spend time in the weight room and just mm -hmm. physical maturity because even though he's a senior, he's not. He's not as big and strong a guy as you'd like or expect as a senior. He's just one of those guys that, that isn't that way. But I do think he's going to have a really good senior year. That's great mention about your Italy trip. Talk about that and what you hope that does for your team. We have our whole team back. So basically, we don't really lose anybody. It's a great time to take a team. You can only do it once every four years. Mm -hmm. So you sign up for these things, and you hope that you have a decent roster to take. And that's going to work out perfect for us because we have our, pretty much our whole team intact. All right, you, you're, you've done this before, so you know what's the value, because everybody talks about the on-the-court value. What about the off-the-court value? Well, it's great. As these kids are going to get to see a lot of great places in Rome and Venice, and, and uh, you know, they're going go to end up at Lake Como, where there's a lot of history, <laughs> beautiful areas, gorgeous areas. And, you know, I don't even think they really realize what a valuable uh, situation this will be an experience for them, and educationally as well as obviously the basketball. And selfishly, from a coaching standpoint, <laughs> you get the 10 days of practice, and I think that's one of the huge reasons from a coaching perspective but you get 10 extra days. It's like an extra spring ball for football guys, you know. <laughs> you referenced Keon Bell. Let, let, let's talk about Keon going forward. Of course, he hangs a huge game up at Gonzaga. Coming back next year, what your hopes and expectations are? Well, Keon is a, is a terrific athlete. You know, I've coached in the Big 12 and the SEC, mm -hmm. and he's that kind of an athlete. He's just a terrific athlete, and he's becoming a better basketball player. Oh, pretty quick. Bell! Right over. Sacre. Uh, That's a seven footer that Keon Bell went over. Watch this. Just a beautiful back door. And then Keon Bell just getting up above Robert Sacre. Sacre challenged it. Look at that. He just went over him. Just a back door play. That's, you can't draw it up any better than what you just. Not very many. 
Shot away. Oh. And good by Bell. <laughs> so sleep is important. And Bell strips Gray. Goodson trying to get back. Bell somehow got it to oh. Gray. And then he stripped again by Keon Bell. A two on one. Bell with the finish for Pepperdine. Harris with the rebound. Taking away Keon Bell. This young man's having a game here in the second half. And the finish. And he draws the foul. He's one of those guys who in high school could score basically any time he touched the ball. And having said that, he turned the ball over so much and it was a little bit careless and poor decision making. And, you know, he didn't value the ball as much as you like. And that's the thing we really need him to do is to take better care of the basketball. Ultimately, he's going to have a chance to go on and play somewhere and make some money. But he's really li limiting his opportunities if he continues to turn the ball over and make as many bad decisions as he did during his freshman, sophomore year. We expect big growth in that area. And he's a strong, tough, competitive kid. And he plays hard. And he's a fierce competitor. He doesn't back down from anybody. Some of the toughest people we've played in the last two years, he's played the best against. Mm -hmm. and so I expect him to have a good junior year. And you, that's a great point. So Keon's coming back. He'll be a junior. Michael will be a senior. You're going to have some upperclassmen now to work with at Pepperdine. Yeah, for the first time, you know, we're going to have a junior and senior class of guys who, who actually have some experience. And, you know, in the 14 years I was gone, Ted, there were seven coaches at Pepperdine during that time. And that's kind of a recipe for disaster. So we're just trying to rebuild this program gradually, steadily from the base up with freshmen, with high school kids. And, you know, we just have to be patient. We've had to be patient, more patient than I've wanted to be. But, we, you know, ultimately, I think it's going to it's going to turn out well. And, and then to finish, Tom, I think you say the climb is probably a little more challenging now because the conference, a little more depth. Conference is better, you know. I mean, so some of the teams that weren't quite as strong when I left are really strong. And St. Mary's and Gonzaga obviously have been tremendously successful. And, you know, some of the teams that were good when I left are not as successful. And, you know, we just need to, we need to get the bottom teams in our conference up higher, uh, stronger. Loyola and Pepperdine need to be, we need to be a force and a factor. And Max did a good job of getting his team competitive. Both Loyola and Pepperdine, it's important that those two L.A. schools are strong in the West Coast Conference.